I'll cover some basic terminology that pertains to point pattern analysis and the types of point patterns that we can investigate. Uh, first of all is the key concept of an event. And as we saw in the introductory lecture, um, point patterns are locations of events. And these events could be accidents, crimes, uh, the location of facilities. What is very particular about point pattern analysis is that the events that are shown on the map, that's why it's called a mapped pattern, are all assumed to be known. So in other words, there are no missing events, no missing values. Also, this implies that there is a certain form of selection bias in that we only map the events, we don't map what we call the non-events. In other words, you have a map of car accidents on a road network, but you don't have locations of where accidents might have happened, but they didn't happen. And uh, similarly, we don't have locations where people could have become sick, but they did not become sick. So this is very important in the modeling of the point pattern analysis, something that we won't really get into in this lecture, but it's a very important as statistical aspect that we only see the ones, so to speak, and we don't observe the zeros. That's important to keep in mind. So then why do we analyze these point patterns? What, what are the research questions that we are interested in? It, first of all, as I already mentioned, the frame of reference is, is randomness. So we want to assess whether the pattern is random or structured in some way. And structured, uh, in particular in the, this context, will mean two very specific things. One is when the events, the points, are closer together than they would be randomly, then we refer to this as a clustered pattern. And the opposite, if the points are further apart from each other than they would be randomly, is referred to as a dispersed pattern or a regular pattern. And so of main interest and most of our attention in, in this module where we deal with the exploratory point pattern analysis will be on assessing whether a pattern is clustered or regular. And then equally importantly, but we won't really get into this, is what is the actual process? What is the model that might have generated this particular pattern. So that's where we try to associate the pattern with both possible covariates or particular functional forms for spatial distributions and so on. In classic point pattern analysis, uh, the points, as I already mentioned, are kind of floating in space. They're located on an isotropic plane. Isotropic means you can move in any direction equally easily. So there is no directional bias. All directions uh, are equally valid. It's I call this a pancake model. And the only thing that really matters, the only variable that is relevant is distance, and specifically distance as straight line distance. So in a classic point of pattern analysis, you can imagine a square box, a square with points located in them. And what we're interested in is, are these points somehow systematically bunched together or clustered or systematically further apart from each other? And we are going to try to assess that by means of statistics that are constructed from the distances between those points. And the classic case is just simply one type of event and the location is the only thing that we are interested in. But there are variants on this. And one variant is called a marked point pattern. The mark is the value associated to a particular event. So we have two things together. We have location together with the value associated with that location. And in classic studies, these were in forestry, the location of a tree and its trunk size or its canopy 
But in more recent studies in economic geography, for example, this pertained to the location of a manufacturing plant and its employment. So we're not only interested in patterns in the location of the points, but also how these patterns in the locations are associated with the values. And, and this is exactly the concept that we covered in the first set of lectures when we talked about spatial autocorrelation. Spatial autocorrelation was the coincidence of proximity in location with similarity in value. And some classic data sets that analyze this, so analyze a marked point pattern and the value, this is traditional, um, is referred to as the mark, is a set um, of locations of trees, longleaf pines. This is one of the classic data sets used in many textbooks and also included as sample data sets in several of the R packages that we will be using in the lab later on. So a marked point pattern is one where we have both location and value. Now, up to this point, we've only dealt with univariate patterns, so one type of point. If we have different types of points, we call it a multi-type pattern. So a multi-type pattern has um, multiple categories of events, but they're mapped together. So you could, of course, map them each separately and analyze them as a univariate point pattern, but in this case we bring them together and then we are particularly interested not only in the standard question for univariate analysis, is there patterning for each of the types by themselves, but also is there association between the patterns in the different types and specifically do they attract each other so they cluster together or do they repulse each other which would be uh, evidence of some type of competition. And um, again, the classic data sets come from forestry, and there's a data set called the Lansing Woods data set, which you find referred to over and over again in textbooks and, and software, where there are different types of trees in a square test plot. And if you look very carefully at the slide, you can see the different symbols the triangles, the circles, the plus signs, and, and so on. And then a little closer to home, uh, one of the data sets we will be using in the lab is both the location of supermarkets, which are little triangles on this map, and the location of liquor stores in the city of Chicago. So here we have two types, and we would be interested in questions like, um, does the presence of a supermarket attract the presence of liquor stores and vice versa. Do liquor stores systematically locate further away from supermarkets than they would randomly? It's always with respect to this concept of randomness. So, so far we've seen the points uh, floating in space, but one of the early examples I illustrated showed the points, the car thefts, on a network. And this is a, a more recent development in the literature where rather than working with straight line distances on isotropic planes, the events are located on an actual network. So they are not floating in space. For example, we have um, in the early 1980s, there were major riots in Los Angeles. So we could look at the particular locations of these riots on the street network of downtown Los Angeles. And similarly, we could look at the locations of IEDs in the street network of Baghdad. Then a final type of analysis uh, also pertains to multiple uh, point patterns, but in a slightly different context in that um, it's referred to as a case control design in that one, one type of point pattern is the, the, the event of interest, for example, a particular type of cancer. And then the other pattern is used to represent uh, 
background risk, so to speak. So in other words, in the classic analysis, the uh, comparison of the point pattern is to complete spatial randomness in, in space. In, in this case, we constrain this and set up the distribution of reference, so to speak, as the control, which could be another type of disease. In, in a classic example um, uh, of, again, a textbook example of uh, larynx cancer cases in Lancashire, the background is taken as a distribution of lung cancers. And in the manufacturing examples of uh, Duranton and Overman, um, the background is taken as the distribution of all manufacturing plants, and then a particular sector is compar compared to that. So the question in this case control setup would be, for example, in, in the Lancashire case, are the red dots um, somehow distributed differently from the green dots, the green dots being the controls, the red dots being the case